Hey everybody, thanks for um, coming back to the third video. I'm sorry that it took so long to get it up. It's a really um, important part of the story too, so I wanted to make sure that I got the third video up in time. Um, so we ended um, with um, Christ having um, ascended at age 39. And I think the last thing that I said that he um, did not die a, a bodily death, but he, that he ascended into Terra. And has since evolved far beyond the confines of physical matter. The Ark of the Covenant was resealed within the UHF bands of Dimension 3 following his ascension. Awaiting the time when Earth's grid rose high enough in vibration to allow for the return of the Sphere of Amenti which was scheduled to occur before the mass ascension wave of 2017 AD. The Azerite Council Interdimensional Association of Free Worlds and their many supporters maintained a stance of non-interference following the success of Jeshua 12's mission. So, let me say that again. The Azerite Council Interdimensional Association, Interdimensional Association of Free Worlds and their many supporters maintained a stance of non-interference following the success of Jeshua 12's mission. That is why Jeshua 12 says, um, you know, Jesus says in the Bible, you know, there's not going to be any after me. This is, this is it. We're not adding to this book. We're basically, the angelic realm isn't doing anything uh, beyond this point. That's, I mean, that's pretty much what that's saying, um, which is, does line up with the Bible. So uh, we're going over here. Um, sorry. The Azerite Council, la la la, we just said that, sorry. Um, they allowed the Elohim and other host matrix families to direct the course of earthly events as they desired. Um, so they were able to, all the different host matrix families were here, they were able to direct everything that's going on on earth, however they wanting, knowing that the truth of the Templar and the law of one, as upheld by the blue flame Melchizedek's and priests of Ur, would eventually come to light within the evolving human consciousness. The Azerites plan to wait until the return of the spirit of Amente to earth's core before bringing this knowledge back into the public domain. And in the meantime, hope to unite the Malchizedeks within the teachings of the sacred law of one. Through Jeshua 12, though Jeshua 12 had successfully aligned the race morphogenetic field at Amente with the original 12 strand DNA imprint, most of the race has still carried traces of genetic distortions from the Templar and Templar axion sills which would need to be cleared prior to the opening of the Halls of Amenti. The Elohim, Templar Melchizedeks, Blue Flame Melchizedeks, and many other unrelated host matrix groups have assisted and continue to assist. Many individuals in clearing their genetic codes in preparation for ascension. And I just want to say if you're um, a spiritual person and you have this like baptism of the spirit um, or you know it, something like that, if you've had it, then you, you know you've had it. There's no question. Um, but that's what that is. You're, you're, all your chakras being cleared out is the same thing as basically having the mark of the beast and all the seals removed. All present-day ideologies that teach conscious evolution and DNA activation and transmutation are geared towards this purpose, including the new information currently being provided by various guardian ET and metaterrestrial forces. Jeshua 12 and the 12th level Tyrannosian avatar from Terra fulfilled his purpose on Earth. Through him, the sphere of Amente was made ready for re-entry into Earth's core, following which the halls of Amente would eventually be opened. The race morphogenetic field had been reunited, so following, oh sorry, had been reunited, so following the opening of the halls of Amente, all souls could again ascend through Amente. Once their genetic imprint had evolved to assemble the fourth and fifth DNA strand. The plan for preparing the races for the 2017 AD ascension wave was put back on schedule since 27 AD when the avatar Jeshua 12 ascended. 
the races of Earth evolved under the primary influence of the Elohim and various other host matrix groups not associated with the Christian and Jewish perspectives. Through the achievements of Jeshua 12 and Jeshua 9, the primary morphogenetic imprint for all the races was returned to the sphere of Amente, and the sphere of Amente was once again made whole. These accomplishments set the stage for mass ascension, but the races still had a long way to go in healing and evolving their consciousness and genetic codes. So what it's saying is Jesus, you know, Jeshua, I don't want to say Jesus, but Jeshua, um, put everybody's souls back into the sphere of Mente so that we could evolve and actually be free from the Nephilim, demonic, archonic influence, or whatever you want to call it. Interdimensional, doesn't matter. <clears throat> the frequency fence quarantine UHF D3, which cracks me up because UHF, older guys, anyway, still blocked Earth from opening relations with the interstellar communities. The Ark of the Covenant D5, which is dimension 5, security seal kept all but the Melchizedek race strains from bodily ascension. The race still carried portions of the Emente seal DNA strands 1, 2, and 3 mutation antiparticle death seal. The Paladorian seal DNA strands 2 and 3 mutation D4 seal and Templar seal DNA 1, 5, and 6 mutation D7, the 666 seal. Within their genetic codes and the memory of their human lineage still remain locked away within the sphere of Amente in the UHF bands of the third dimension. These conditions would have to evolve and heal before humanity could be prepared to face the ascension wave of 2017. Throughout the evolution of the races, guardian races attempted to awaken humanity to the reality of its evolutionary destiny. All of the major earth religions are seated at one time or another by guardian groups to help the races prepare for their eventual ascension out of Harmonic Universe 1. Through the teaching, though the teachings are often quite different or seemingly contradictory, all religions had suffered manipulation and distortion at the hands of the man and covert intruder ET forces. They are united through their original purpose of achieving ascension and freedom from the illusions of matter. The secrets of Imente were ultimately kept under the protection of the blue flame cloister Melchizedeks and the Hebrew Essenes who followed them. But the reality of Imente belongs to all of the races and world religions. The Spear of Amente, Ark of the Covenant, and Halls of Amente represent the manifestation of the Covenant of Palador, which holds the evolutionary promise and progression for all races of the human lineage. It is the promise of humanity, humanity returning to the integrity of the immortal God being that is the original morphogenetic imprint of the human race. The purpose of ascension is the hidden heritage and legacy of the human condition, the fulfillment of humanity's evolutionary blueprint would never have occurred to you to it would never have occurred to you to imagine a god in any other human terms earth components these three figures worked out a drama highly symbolic propelled by concentrated energy of great force the events as they are recorded however did not occur in history the crucifixion of christ was a psychic but not a physical event ideas of almost unimaginable magnitude were played out Judas, for example, was not a man in your terms. He was, like all the disciples, a blessed creation of fragment personality formed by the Christ personality. He represents the self-betrayer. He dra dramatized a portion of each individual's personality that focuses upon physical reality in a grasper manner and denies the inner self out of greed. Each of the 12 represented qualities of personality that belong to one individual and Christ, as you know him, represented the inner self. The 12, therefore, plus Christ, as you know him, the one figure composed of the three, represented an individual earthly personality, the inner self, and 12 main characters connected with the egotistical self. As Christ was surrounded by the principles so the inner self is surrounded by these physical-oriented characteristics. 
each drawn outward towards daily reality on the one hand and yet orbiting the inner self. The disciples, therefore, were given physical reality by the inner self. As all of our earthly characteristics come out of your inner nature, this was a living parable made flesh among you, a cosmic play worked out for your behalf, couched in terms that you could understand. The lessons were made plain. As all the ideas behind them were personified, if you will forgive the term, this was like a local morality play, but on your corner of the universe. This does not mean it was less real than you previously supposed. In fact, the implications of what is said here should clearly hint as at the more powerful aspects of godhood. The three Christ personalities were born upon your planet and indeed became flesh among you. None of these was crucified. The twelve disciples was materializations from the energies of these three personalities, their combined energies. They were then fully endowed with individuality, however, but their main task was to clearly manifest with, within themselves certain abilities inherent in all men. The same kind of dramas in different ways have been given, and while the drama is always different, it is always the same. This does not mean that a Christ has appeared within each system of reality. It means that the idea of God has manifested in within system within each system in a way that is comprehensive to its inhabitants. The drama continues to exist. It does not belong, for example, to your past. Only you have placed it there. This does not mean it always reoccurs. The drama then was far from meaningless. The spirit of the Christ in your terms is legitimate. It is probable God 